A couple of weeks ago, I was lucky enough to chat to four-time champion national hunt superstar Richard Johnson. Now, we all know he has a really busy schedule, so he kindly set aside a few moments to chat to me about his career so far. Apart from the odd signal issue, it was an absolute pleasure to chat to him. Johnson, thank you so much for joining me today. Are you still okay for time, or? Yeah, so I've just um, my wife actually just jumped out to get the two our two boys, and actually uh, our daughter hasn't finished until half uh, quarter past six. So um, so I'm just sort of um, yeah, we, we're sort of we're just going to be hanging around for her anyway. So I thought well, I can I've got this little bit of time. Hopefully we can get uh, yeah get it get it get it get it done. So okay, right. brilliant. Thank you so much. So I just want to start from the beginning, as I always like to. So how did you get into racing? Um, I always rode um, ponies when I was um, growing up and um, I, yeah, I think, you know, I always sort of saw racing going on and my dad rode as an amateur. So, um, so I, you know, point to points and stuff. So I, I, I always had that idea. I wanted to be a jockey. Yeah, well, I rode, I rode yeah, ponies all the time. Then when I was uh, 14, I went to work for David Nicholson. Well, I went, didn't go to work. I went uh, there in the holidays a couple of times just to see what it was like, I suppose. And, and I think my mum and dad thought, if I, if I went and saw what it was like, I might suddenly decide I didn't want to do it. But um, but I uh, went there at 16 um, after I did my GCSEs. And um, yeah, I, think I didn't enjoy school very much. So it was I was keen to get out and do something different. And, and I think realistically, I thought probably, yeah, I'd be there for a couple of years. And, um, you know, I must, might have to go to agriculture college and, and go back to the farm at some point. But um, yeah, it's lasted, lucky enough, it lasted a lot longer than I um, could imagine. So did you ever have a plan B? Yeah, well, say plan B was probably go to agriculture college, um, come home and farm with my brother and my dad and sort of probably still do point of pointing and, you know, enjoy horses. But um, I, I, realistically, I think obviously being a jockey was quite a dream. You know, it's like most children, they dream to be footballers or cricketers or you know whatever other sport you, you you love doing at school there's a fair chance that unfortunately you, you won't be able to do it as a, as a career so um yeah I feel very lucky to you know it, yeah it, it's gone very well and and I've actually made that into, yeah, into my career and um it's lasted yeah longer than I could have ever imagined it just goes to show that dreams do come true they do sometimes so uh, so yeah no I think I'm, I am a good a good good example of that and yeah I, you know I, I could never imagine that well one it could have could have really happened and, and, and obviously happened you know so well so I'm, I feel very fortunate for that. So did you say you had ponies growing up? Yeah I, I lived on a farm my, my parents still farm now and um, like I say I had ponies um, sort of every, you know all the way from probably when I was five or six years old um, and I did lots of you know gymkhanas and show jumping and you know, well basically anything that was going on I'd have a go at and uh, yeah I, I loved you know I, I just love riding I think a lot of young people now say to me oh you know what's the most important thing to do and I say well the most important thing is to learn to ride and enjoy it and then you know th then then hopefully um go into races for, racing from there really yeah turn your love into a career yeah, exactly and if, if it's you know it doesn't matter what you do in life but if you love it I think you're always going to um enjoy it more and you know it, it's much easier to, to sort of make it a career when you went to work for David Nicholson, did would you say that that is where you learnt everything, and he was a huge influence on you in your career? Yeah, definitely. He he was the man that really sort of I think put me in the right direction, and, and not, not only that, he just had a. Um, and I think I probably when I went there, I was quite scared of him. Um, he had a big reputation of being quite. I not quite sure what the right word is, um, but um, but yeah, you know, he, he I, I was sort of a bit a bit frightened of him, I suppose. And with that, I got a lot of you know, I respect him hugely, and I listened to every word he said. And I wanted, all I wanted to do was please him. And I think, you know, I learned a lot of my sort of, I suppose, early skills there. And um, again, he was great at advice as well as being a boss and training horses. He was an ex jockey himself, and you know definitely you know put me on the right um, on the right path what was the one thing you would say that you learned from him that you've taken on to your career is that one specific thing at all or many things 
Um, many things, I'm sure. But I think, again, he's just a man that, you know, you, you know, sounds awful. But you, you know, you, as a jockey, you, you've got to listen to your trainer. You've got to sort of hopefully carry out the orders you're, you're given. Um, and also, he was, you know, very much... If you work hard, um, you know, you'll get your chance. Um, and then I think that carried on, really. I think I've always felt if you work hard, hopefully you'll, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get uh, more chances. Um, and and like I say, I, I think for me, yeah, that, that sort of mentality. And, and he, he, you know, I, I, it wasn't just me. There was an awful lot of other jockeys, an awful lot of other jockeys that, you know, went through his sort of academy and obviously he was champion trainer himself. But, you know, he, he just, there was trainers and jockeys came through there. Um, and Alan King was his assistant at the time, and you know, if I go to Alan King's now, you know, you can you can you can tell all the things that Dave Nicholson did when he was training. Alan, you know, has, has kept a lot of a lot a lot of those things up. So after you were your time with Dave Nicholson, where did you go then? Um, well, then I then I lost my claim when I was working for him. So um, so basically, I yeah, you know, I, I sort of went to. When when he retired, um, I carried on riding for Alan King, and then I again went to sort of start riding for Philip Hobbs. Um, sort of, it, it just you know, I was lucky. Unfortunately, Richard and Woody sort of having an injury and having to retire gave me the opportunity that Philip was looking for another jockey, and I started to ride for him, and that that's where that connection started. But I already had people like um, Henry Daly, um, who again is probably my longest serving trainer I worked for and ride for, and unfortunately yeah it makes me feel old when we well, it makes us both feel old when we know we think about how, how long i've been riding for him so it's so again it's he, uh, henry daly has been another another key person that's been a, a big supporter of mine for a long time what's the process um that happens with a trainer so you know you said a lot of people go through um the, the yard and stuff if someone's not very good do they just sort of get asked to leave no i think i think you know i know um every yard is slightly different and, and, and I think for a young jockey coming through it, it's probably quite important to go to the right trainer and I think there is some some trainers that are definitely very good at giving young, young people op- the opportunity to to start and also um you know and I know obviously Philip Hobbs is where I've been for a long time you know he has a, a bit of a you know you, you you when you come if you if you say you want to, to you know to be a jockey you know there's basically you get in the order um and if you work hard and, and, and wait your turn you'll, you'll get your turn and he'll try and give every every person the opportunity um and then obviously it's sort of up to you to to, to grasp that opportunity and you know you, it obviously does get to a stage where a trainer will probably say to you know a young lad that look I, I've, I've tried as much as I can but unfortunately I, I I'm struggling to give you any more opportunities so then it's up to them if they want to you know probably stay working for that trainer but perhaps not have you know the, the opportunity is going to go on to the next jockey coming up through or they've got the opportunity to go to, go to a different trainer and um yeah try, try a, a a new yard a new, a new place a new environment to to to, to, to get on really and it, it isn't easy and, and i must admit you know i feel um you know I, I was very lucky and had a great start and it all went very swimmingly for me but um you know it, it is it isn't an easy place to, 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 to get going and, and you do need a little bit of luck and I was you know unfortunately obviously I said Richard and Woody's injury was a big help to me so unfortunately for him uh, with Philip Hobbs but even with David Nixon uh, Warren Mars and left to go to ride Jenny Pittman's and Adrian Maguire suffered with some injuries when I was just coming up through um, the ranks and it probably gave me more opportunities than I could have expected at you know 18, 19 years old so all those things you, you need a bit of luck you know it doesn't matter you know I think how good or bad or whatever you are um you need a little bit of being in the right place at the right time is very important that's interesting actually because i always wondered if sort of you know if if a jockey didn't work out for them would they go on to be like a groom or or maybe do something else but i suppose could they, could they do that could they then be a groom if they decided they yeah. didn't ride anymore yeah no definitely and there is there is you know there's lots of lads working and racing that um you know they, they end up going to be you know they love the horses and, 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 and they're very good riders. And it just, unfortunately as a jockey, it doesn't work out, but you know, every, every trainer uh, would love those, those people to stay in their yard because, you know, they're great assets to the yard as well. So, um, you know, often they can, they can probably try and find them a, um, you know, whether they go on to be a head lad in the yard or a traveling head lad and, and to go racing with the horses or, um, you know, there's, there's lots of other avenues um, rather than just being a jockey. So um, I know, I know, 
obviously trainers are always looking for um you know it's not easy to find good staff um and you know if, if you've got a good member of staff that unfortunately their jockey career doesn't really work out you know most most trainers would be trying to keep them um working for them even if if even if that's you know that's not a, a possibility to be a jockey they they hopefully try and give them a yeah a different a different opportunity somewhere else as we've said, it comes with lots of ups and downs, but what kept you motivated and focused and not giving up? I think, I, look, I, again, it happened very quickly for me, and I was, yeah, I, I mean, I, I even now, look, looking back at it, I can't really believe how, you know, how smooth a career I've had. But, um, you know, I think I, I just loved the horses. You know, when I left school, um, I thought you can go to a place and they're going to pay you um, to ride horses all day. So, I mean, for me, that was you know at 16 that was like you know for me the best job in the world I, I thought that was you know I you know I'd have almost done it for free so um so again I, I just really enjoyed it and I, I David Nicholson's we had a, a great sort of bunch of lads uh, um, and girls there that you know that worked in the yard and you know it was I suppose it was my my sort of university days in a way I you know I probably learned a lot about life in a short space of time and um you know, we all got on very well, and we had a had a fantastic time. And and those are day, those are the days that I will never never forget. And actually, yeah, have have lots of very fond memories about. So, um, it was hard not to enjoy yourself. So, um, in in that respect, um, it was easy for me not to think, oh, I'm going to try and do something else. Um, but again, I think when when you've been doing it for five, six, seven, eight years, and then maybe if your dream of being a jockey isn't really coming to fruition, then I can see why you know some people decide actually look I'm, I'm gonna try a different avenue whether that's in racing um or you know in a different career but again you know even in racing you've got you know jobs within the jockey club or the bha with starters and um, all different careers so you know there's lots of things you can do with horses it doesn't have to be in racing so it's you know i think the love of horses is why most people come into racing and that's you know that's definitely the you know the key key thing that keeps people involved with horses on a long-term basis i think you got your first gold cup win when you were 22 weren't you yes yeah i so again you know even saying it now i think it's yeah it sort of surprises me and and the, the only thing i you know i've said before i i generally didn't didn't appreciate it at the time oh, you know how lucky i was to be in the race or, or even you know even win the race um so again almost when i won it a couple of years ago on native river it, it, it you know i realized that then you know it took me 18 years to i think when i was 22 i thought oh this will come around every every couple of years but then actually yeah i really realized that you, you know for me the gold cup is the, the best race you know, you know of our calendar and the race we all well of every year if that if i could win one race that would be it so um yeah i think i i, I appreciate it a lot more second time round and so sort of even to myself thought I, I need to take it all in and you know enjoy the moment because it it's just, it's so hard just to get a horse good enough to ride in the race let alone win the race did you aim to try and win the gold cup each each year well you know in a, in a perfect world that would be ideal it, it's all about having the right horse um you, you know i think yeah, you know, i love riding winners whether it's on a monday or a saturday or Cheltenham, you know on gold cup day but i think it, yeah that that is really you know it's down to the horses you're riding and i'm again fortunate to have some nice horses to ride but you know for some people yeah just to get a horse to ride in the gold cup is is very difficult so it's always an aim to you know to hopefully have a horse good enough to ride in the race and win it but for, for me being champion jockey is 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 the thing i aim to do every year um obviously last year it didn't work out but um you know i, I feel very privileged that um obviously i had to wait for ap to to stop but um you know to, to have been champion jockey was was my my goal of my whole career really so you're gonna aim for champion jockey again next year that's the plan um yeah no we've had a, a little bit a quiet summer this year but um we've got a lot of horses to look forward to now for the winter and all you know all my trains actually are full of horses and they're all they're all looking forward to sort of october when you know the, more, the winter horses will start running so again I'm hoping that we'll have a, a nice busy winter and um, yeah, fingers crossed that that will definitely be the aim. You weren't champion jockey this year, but wasn't that down to a broken arm, was it? Yeah, well, unfortunately I broke my arm in January, which was, yeah, I've, there's never a good time to have an injury, but <laughs> that was especially frustrating. Um, and me and myself and Brian Hughes were, were, you know, sort of neck and neck at the time. So yeah, that, that obviously was a, yeah, a, a huge blow for that. And obviously when we came back, I was hoping to be able to, um, 
you know get you know cut cut the cut the gap and 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 that was still the aim to try and catch Brian. Um, and then obviously, yeah, none of us could have even imagined that, you know, what, what, um, what was ahead of us. So, um, so yeah, it was frustrating, but yeah, I think that's, um, that's, 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 that's the way of the world really. And, and look, obviously a lot of people have had much more worse things to deal with. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to moan about that. And it's just nice to get back racing now. And yeah, the, the plan this year is definitely to be champion jockey again. Are you aiming to beat AP McCoy's record? Um, it would be a lovely thing to do, but um, I think realistically, look, it's it's I'm still quite a long way off at the moment. So, <clears throat> look, it's one of those. I think all records and all um, targets. You you have, you know, I, I try to take one season at a time. I, I've always started off every season wanting to be champion jockey, but I think I I first aim for a hundred winners, and then you sort of, you know, go, go on from there. But I think again at the moment, AP's record is is a little bit further away than I I want to be thinking about at the moment. So. Um, for me, yeah, being champion jockey this year is, is my main aim. Um, again, we'll be giving it a good go. But again, it's obviously Brian Hughes has sort of uh, took my crown last year. And, and, you know, obviously not just him, unfortunately. There's, you know, whether it's Aidan Coleman, Sam Justin Davis, Harry Cobden, Sean Bowen. I mean, there's a whole line of uh, young and up-and-coming jockeys coming through. And, um, yeah, you know, they, they, they make me work very hard for... Yeah, for, for for every every ride as well. So um, so I think you know I think racing's in a as in a you know a good good place at the moment. Obviously, we've got lots of um, issues in the last few months, but I think you know especially national hand racing, you know, a huge amount of talent in the jockey front, and, and obviously lots of young trainers coming through as well. So again, again, it's um yeah, I think there's lots to look forward to. Um, and like I say, yeah, try, my my aim is to be champion jockey this year, and um, you know that that's uh, yeah, we'll take each year as it comes. Yeah, I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to when crowds can go back and it all starts to get back to normal again. Now, another major date in the calendar is the Grand National. You've done that. You've entered 21 times, haven't you? Yeah, I've had a lot of goes. Um, yeah, I think people remind me that I'm the, the most losing jockey in the Grand National now. Well, you but, were um, twice. Well, yeah, we've, we've we've gone close, very very close twice. And and look, I, I've had yeah two very very good. Um, chances and and they both ran ran their hearts out and obviously what's up boys which is quite a long time ago now but he he obviously went very close and um it was it, i think that was almost the worst one because i i probably at the elbow i thought i had one and then the last 50 yards just to get caught was yes more than frustrating um but again and, and both king you know his second in the race was was fantastic as well so it, it, it is a frustrating thing at the moment but at the same time um yeah, hopefully we've, we'll, 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 we'll be going all out again this year to try and find the right horse to have another good go. Do you still get nervous when you go around? Do you ever get like nervous or an adrenaline rush still, or is it kind of like I've got this? Uh, no, I, well, I definitely haven't got it because I've, 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 yeah, I, my, my record doesn't really speak that well. But, um, but no, I think you, you always get nervous before. And I think any, especially any big race, you there's that apprehension of. You know, especially in the Grand National, you've got 40 runners, um, four and a half miles. You know, this sounds awful. There's an awful lot to go wrong. So you, you're, you're thinking you, you hope the horse, you know, again, has a clear run round, um, hasn't, doesn't, doesn't come into any sort of bad luck and, and yeah, horse in front of him falls and then you get nowhere to go. And um, so you, you're always, I, 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 well, I'm definitely apprehensive and, and you're just hoping that you get a, um, yeah, the horse has every chance to, to, to run his race and, Hopefully, he's, hopefully he's good enough on the day. But yeah, I think you'd be slightly odd if you didn't have some slight. Uh, I wouldn't call it nerves. I think yeah, you're, you're apprehensive and you're just you want you know such a big day. You want it to go well. Well, you never know. 2021 might be the year. I hope so. <laughs> so, what's your favourite course to ride? Um, I, I think it's um, look, there's there's amazing tracks obviously Cheltenham Festival is, is probably I think the best place to ride a winner the, the atmosphere there is, is unbelievable Cheltenham's a fantastic track um, so yeah so that that's probably the, the best feeling you know obviously yeah again winning the Gold Cup two years ago I think that was probably the best feeling I've ever had winning any race um, you know the crowd and, and I think because I sort of you know I, I appreciated the whole the whole thing so that, that was amazing but I think for me the most important thing is the horses you're riding um, you know the tracks are great, but if you're riding a horse that's not quite good enough to be at the Cheltenham Festival, say in one of the big races, then it's not that much fun because you know the horse is finding it hard. And you know, if if you're riding a good horse or a, the best horse in the race uh, at any any track, um, who jumps well and tries and 
you know has all the right things um you can have a brilliant ride round well every track um so i think for me it's all about the horse you're riding if you're riding a nice horse um who's in good form um yeah that that's for, for me that's the best buzz you know when you're riding horses that are enjoying themselves and you know you know sounds silly but you know when they're the best horse in the race it, it obviously makes you know you feel like you're literally um sort of going around in second gear and everybody else is is flat out what's been your favorite horse to ride throughout your whole career um i've got to be very careful now because i've ridden an awful lot of very nice horses and um you know we, we've been very fortunate to yeah rid, ridden some some greats really but i think um right rooster booster was a fantastic horse on champion hurdle um like in the champion hurdle literally he was almost running away with me coming down to the second last hurdle so you know that i don't know that that'll ever happen to me probably in any race ever again um and he because he, he was gray and i think the people loved him and he was always a he's a horse that did so so well for so long he was fantastic um and obviously looks like trouble who won the gold cup um, 20 years ago now you know he he's a horse we've still got at home who lives with us um and my father-in-law trained him so again he's a family family pet now so um he's fantastic um and obviously native river you know he's he's a horse that you know um you, you'd struggle to find a, a tougher horse or a, a horse that would you know give you more pleasure so yeah but they're some of the horses um and I've all, we know we've also got menorah now who lives at home with us um and again he was a he was a horse the year I was champion jockey for the first time, um, you know, he won at Sandown on that final day. And just before I got presented the award, he won. You know, it, it, the whole day that day was amazing. And again, he now lives at home as well. So it's, you know, you get horses you get quite attached to and it's very hard to sort of, um, yeah, you know, not not um, you know, not get attached to some of those, those very good horses. I was going to ask about Looks Like Trouble. So he's like your family pet, but now you have others. So it's quite a nice reminder, I suppose, when you look outside you've kind of got a collection of all your successes. Yeah, we, we've got, we've got a good, good, good crew at home now, along with ponies and brute mares and everything going on. So, um, but no, it, it, you know, to have looks like trouble and, uh, Menorah, they're, they're, they're two horses that, you know, are very good to me as a, as a jockey, but they're also, yeah, family pets now. And they've also, you know, all the children have sat on them all and they've just got very good attitudes. They're very, very kind horses. And, um, you know, very good, at, you know, nice to do anything with. So it's, it's, it's lovely to have those horses to sort of remind you some of the really good days. And yeah, some days when you have a very bad day, actually, if you see them as you're driving back in, it, um, yeah, it reminds you that it's not all that bad. When you're not racing, what do you get up to? Well, we've three children. Um, so we've, and we've got yeah, a lot of horses at home now. So yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm never really have a quiet, a quiet, a quiet time. And, um, I think even with, you know, when lock, lockdown was on, um, it was actually a, you know, a nice change to be at home, but actually, if anything, we had a, you know, almost just as busy time because, um, yeah, anyone that works with horses all the time knows there's, you know, there's seven days a week, um, and children, children are about the same really. So, so again, it was, it was great to have family time, but also, yeah, you know, it's amazing how much, you know, I never had a, a, a quiet, quiet hour or a, yeah, a day when I thought, oh, I don't know what to do today. It was always, there's always something to do. So again, I, I think it's, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be any other way. So, um, so you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate in that respect to to have that, you know, ability to sort of my work, my work and my pleasure is is the same thing. Yeah, it's nice to be busy. I like being busy. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you reckon your children will be future jockeys? Um, I think they've all got different ideas um, at different times. They've all said they want to be a jockey, but again, I think you look know, if they, if they if they they all ride again, they all ride ponies and they they enjoy it. Um, I think for me, again, like I said earlier, I think the most important thing for me is that they enjoy riding. Um, so they ride when they, they, you know, as much or as little as they want. Um, and I'm sure, you know, over the next, you know, years of their school life, they'll do lots of other sports and it'll be whatever they sort of take to, I suppose. And, and if they want to pursue racing or riding more, that's great. And if they don't, um, you know, it's just nice to see them you know enjoy ponies um but i i know from growing up i have lots of friends that still ride but only socially um and i grew up with riding ponies and, and it's it's a it's a lovely pastime to sort of do alongside anything else so again if, if racing is 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 what they want to go for um i'll be fully behind them and if yeah if if, if it's something else you know I, I can you know i can see at the same time it's quite a a pressure if um yeah if if your parents have done something to a high level and you're trying to follow them sometimes that can be quite a hard thing to do as well 
Well, they've got a good role model, so if they do, I'm sure they'll do well. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, they can do as, do as they're told rather than what, what I do, I think. <laughs> do you ever see yourself in the future becoming a trainer? No, I don't think so. I, I, I love love the horses and I and actually I, I really enjoy the training side of it but um you know I think you know for, for me when I finish racing um I'd rather be in more get more involved with the breeding and and um you, you know the sort of bringing on of young horses and, and probably before they go into training but again it, it's not something I would rule out completely but at the moment it's um yeah I think I'd rather be you know we've, we've I've already you know myself and my wife you know we we, we breed we've got sort of five brood mares now and we we started breeding probably five six years ago now so we're we're sort of we've started on that on that route um which which works quite well with the family farm at home so hopefully that's that's something will grow and grow um and, and also keep me you know very involved with the sport and you know hopefully um yeah you know i definitely don't, don't want to leave racing because it's it's well it's been already been very good to me and it's something i really enjoy yeah well it is your life isn't it so you wouldn't want to ever come out of it I think I know what you mean by um you know like growing up with horses you always just like with for me even with my career I always love riding and I still ride and I can't imagine my life without horses or riding so I know where you're coming from there that is all my questions actually so yeah no, exactly no definitely yeah well that is um all my questions so thank you so much for uh taking the time out of your day to do this for me no problem at all Lovely. Thank you so much. I'll let you go because the signals disappeared. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, and we'll um, we'll we'll catch up soon. Yeah. All right then. Bye. Yes. Come and fly away with me. Come and fly away with me. Come and fly away with me. Come, come and fly away with me.